hematocrit level uh, on testosterone replacement. So this is something that comes up uh, quite a lot. It's a condition, um, it's called erythrocytosis. Sometimes you'll hear docs call it polycythemia, but um, that's not really the right term because uh, we're only dealing with red cells. Um, polycythemia involves more than one cell line, so white blood cell counts or platelets being elevated as well. It's actually a different condition. So um, in the interest of speaking accurately, we're going to call it erythrocytosis. So this is when your hematocrit level begins to rise. And there are theoretical risks with that, specifically increased risk of blood clots leading to heart attack, stroke, DVT, pulmonary embolism, that sort of thing. It is debatable whether elevated hematocrit or erythrocytosis secondary to testosterone therapy, especially when it's dosed at physiologic levels, increases your risk of clotting. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Um, I will just say that uh, there are many populations around the world, specifically places like the Bolivian Andes, people that live at high altitude, that uh, routinely live their entire lives with elevated hematocrit, hematocrit counts well above 50%, many as high as 55%, and they don't appear to be dropping dead from clotting disorders. Okay, so. Having said that, though, uh, the Endocrine Society does recommend that 54% in terms of hematocrit is the upper limit um, and testosterone therapy should either be discontinued or dosage adjustments uh, be made when you get up that high. Now, it's interesting that um, not everybody gets this, clearly. There are guys that, uh, even guys who use super physiologic doses of testosterone that never develop erythrocytosis. And presumably this has something to do with the sensitivity of their androgen receptor. If you have a very sensitive receptor, particularly in the bone marrow, probably more likely to get erythrocytosis. If you don't have a sensitive receptor, you know, you may never develop that condition. So regardless, um, what typically happens is when you start creeping up uh, above 50% is most physicians require that uh, you donate blood, okay, get a phlebotomy. And that's a reasonable thing to do in the short run. But that's not a long-term solution, in my opinion. Um, I've seen a countless times where guys who go and get phlebotomies you know, every four months or so, and inevitably they end up iron deficient. Their ferritin levels crash, they feel terrible. And uh, sometimes that can be missed on a CBC because they don't actually become anemic. But what you see is the MCV value on the CBC, the mean corpuscular volume, starts to go down, which means their red cells are shrinking, okay? check an iron panel on those guys and sure enough they're iron deficient so that it's just not a good way uh, in the long run to manage that condition so there's a few things you can do obviously you can lower the dose right that that will probably work most guys don't want to do that they typically feel like they're dialed in um, so you can split the dose up sometimes you know twice a week three times a week you can even go to small uh, daily doses uh, if you're willing to do that and you know the theoretical the idea there is that you know, you're not getting this huge peak uh, after your weekly injection, which is only going to drive more uh, erythrocytosis, stimulate the bone marrow, and that uh, maybe a smoother, steadier testosterone level will help bring that hematocrit down under that 54% mark. Um, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Now, most of the time when this happens, it's in guys who take intramuscular testosterone. Like by far, that's the most common um, delivery method in guys that get erythrocytosis. I've seen some studies say that up to 60% of men on intramuscular testosterone um, will end up with some degree of erythrocytosis. So um, so then the obvious you know, potential solution there is to try a topical or some other delivery method. And um, there's actually a, a far lower risk of erythrocytosis when you use a transdermal cream um, somewhere from like 12 to 13 percent. So that is absolutely a viable option. Uh, it needs to be a compounded cream, okay? The prescription stuff that you can get is usually not uh, potent enough to get your levels up to where you're going to feel better, all right? Pellets are an option. I'm not a huge fan of pellets, but, you know, for some guys, they, they are helpful. Um, and then there are some newer, uh, very long-acting I say newer because they're not newer in Europe, but they're new in the United States. Uh, testosterone undecanoate uh, formulations as opposed to like cypionate, propionate, enanthate. Undecanoate is a very long acting testosterone ester and uh, they tend to have very low levels of uh, erythrocytosis as well. So 
those are all options. The first thing I would do is split up the dose. The second thing I would do, if that doesn't work, is consider uh, switching over to a high potency compounded uh, topical cream. Um, it's okay to donate blood every now and then, but again, that is not a long-term solution for erythrocytosis. So work with your doc, uh, explore other options, and uh, maybe in another video I'll get into what I really think about hypercoagulability and erythrocytosis from testosterone, um, but uh, we'll leave that for another day. All right, see you next time. All Man Medicine video and audio has been created and shared online for informational purposes only. This podcast does not constitute the practice of medicine or professional healthcare services of any kind, including the giving of medical advice. I am not your doctor. No doctor-patient relationship has been established. This content is not meant to be a substitute for professional medical advice and should not be relied upon solely for that purpose either. The only purpose of this content is to present peer-reviewed, research-backed health information for your consideration. As always, rely on the advice and guidance of your personal physician before undertaking any activity presented here, and if in doubt or not comfortable with said activity, practice discretion. Your health is your responsibility and not ours. Finally, I take conflicts of interest seriously. I accept no compensation whatsoever from any private corporations, including pharmaceutical or supplement companies. You can trust that if I recommend a medication, product, or service, it's because I genuinely believe in it and not because I'm being paid to endorse it.